my name is Mary Farns. I'm the night nursing manager with the Irish Cancer Society. I'm here today to present to you my findings from my educational fellowship, which was funded by the All Ireland Institute. Um, my chosen site was Sir Michael Sobel House, um, which is in Oxford. Um, Sobel House is situated about a 15 minute um, bus journey from Oxford city centre. And it's on the site of the Churchill Hospital, which is an acute general hospital. Um, I choose this site in particular because I was familiar with their uh, course in advanced pain and symptom management, of which I attended on a number of occasions. Um, just to give you a little background about the population of Oxford versus, Oxford versus Dublin. Um, the population of Oxford is just over 150,000 people, um, and they have 28 inpatient hospice beds. 18 of those beds are in Sobel House, um, and 10 beds are in Catherine House, which is in the north of Oxford. Um, in Dublin, we have a population of over 1 million people, um, and we have 69 inpatient beds. So if you work out the maths, we have 65% less beds in Dublin per head of population than, we do, than they do in Oxford. So just to give you a background to my presentation, I firstly will talk about the night nursing service, uh, then look at the objectives of my visit, um, my work schedule for the week, um, the outcomes from my visit, um, what my recommendations are, and then just some acknowledgements. So looking at the night nursing service, um, the Irish Cancer Society provides a national night nursing service. Um, so we provide end of life care in the patient's own home. We have 195 registered general nurses <coughs> located nationwide. Um, and we provide, uh, they provide non-specialist palliative care um, in the patient's own home. Their hours of work are between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. and they are all employees of the Irish Cancer Society. The night nursing service can be accessed through the patient's GP, the public health nurse, or the community specialist palliative care team. For the non-malignant patients who access our service, they can only be accessed, uh, the night nursing can only be accessed through the community specialist palliative care team. Um, some of the objectives of my visit then <coughs> were to identify uh, competence frameworks which would support non-specialist nurses working in the community setting. Um, and also to examine patient health records in the home setting. So my work schedule for uh, the week was uh, it was a five-day placement. Uh, day one, I was working with Dr. Mary Miller, who is a palliative care uh, consultant doctor um, on the inpatient unit. Day two and three, I was working in the community setting with one of the clinical nurse specialists. Um, day four, I attended some multidisciplinary meetings. And on day five, I was in the day hospital. So I picked three main outcomes that were particularly relevant to night nursing to discuss today. Um, those three uh, were looking at the learning pathways or educational pathways that they have in Oxford for um, for nurses and other multi professional health healthcare professionals. Um, I also uh, was quite interested in their uh, advanced care planning um, program and also the the fact that nurses in some areas in the UK can actually verify uh, an expected death. In Oxford, they have what they call the Oxford Learning Pathways, and these pathways are there to meet the individual's needs using blended learning. And blended learning involves learning through observing, learning through reflective discussion, uh, using case studies as a form of learning, independent learning, and learning by doing and they use the anagram or ORCID, O-R-C-I-D. This is further enhanced using um, what they call a ELCA, or it's an electronic um, end-of-life care for all too. And this was commissioned by the Department of Health in the UK to support their 2008 end-of-life care strategy. It has 150 e-learning sessions, uh, which include eight courses or modules. And those eight modules are assessment, advanced care planning, communication skills, symptom management, integrating learning, social care, bereavement and spirituality. 
So looking at advanced care planning. Um, so I'll just start off by giving a definition of what that is. Advanced care planning is described as a voluntary process of discussion and review to help an individual who has capacity to anticipate how their condition may affect them in the future, and if they wish, set on record choices or decisions about their care and treatment, so that these can then be referred to by their carers in the event that they lose capacity to decide once their illness progresses. So this fe featured as part of the initial patient assessment by the clinical nurse specialist. Um, and the two areas in terms of advanced care planning that they focused on generally was uh, the place of death, so where the patient wanted a wish to die, um, and also uh, do not resuscitate wishes. And this it was a particular interest to myself in terms of uh, night nursing. We had an occasion where a night nurse attended a patient um, the patient was living on his own. Uh, he had advanced cancer. Um, he, his next of kin was a distant cousin, so she arrived at the apartment to him. He opened the door to her. She was there really in the capacity to um, look at his symptoms and assess what medications he was requiring during the night. So she was in the house and he went to the bathroom and he was in the bathroom for about 10 minutes and she um, called on him to see if he was okay and he said he was all right. Then a few minutes later, um, she called to get he. She heard a thud, and she went into the bathroom, and he had collapsed. Um, so she was on her own. So she called an ambulance. Um, the ambulance arrived, and they commenced uh, resuscitation of him. Um, he didn't survive. And um, so as you can imagine this was very distressing for the nurse. The ambulance crew had to uh, commence resuscitation. That is their policy when they're called out to a home. So this was particularly interesting for me to, to see how they uh, looked at this in the UK and, and in Oxford. So they have what they call a purple form in, um, with the, the GP has this, a, a purple form which he completes with the patient um, and, and signs that form. Uh, and that form then is left in the patient's house. So anybody who is visiting, any healthcare professional who's visiting the home, um, they can ask for the form and so they know then that this patient is not for resus and, and um, most of the palliative patients would be not for resus. And it's now illegal in the UK to commence CPR if the patient has a DNA CPR form completed and signed by a doctor. DNA CPR means do not attempt cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Um, and then moving on to the other aspect uh, that I was also interested in, and I feel that you know uh, it perhaps could be of benefit to the night nurses um, in the future. And um, so, but how are, are considering training nurses to verify or confirm an expected death? Uh, the UK and Midwifery Council 2012 have stated that in the event of death, a registered nurse may confirm or verify death has occurred, providing there is an explicit local protocol in place to allow such an action, which includes guidance on when other authorities, for example the police or, uh, or the coroner, should be informed prior to removal of the body. Nurses undertaking this responsibility must only do so providing they have received appropriate education and training and have been assessed as competent in accordance with their code of practice. Um, there is no re legal requirement in the UK for a medical practitioner to attend to verify that death has occurred, only to issue a death certificate stating the cause of death, and that's the Critical, British Medical Association, 1999. So in the UK, um, in one area, Milton Keynes Community Health Service, um, they have developed guidelines for, uh, an ex for expected death, where nurses can verify um, that death has occurred. Um, there are notable exceptions and one example that I've given is if a drug error has occurred and the patient dies subsequent to a drug error, then the nurse cannot verify death in that instance. And there are, as I said, many other notable exceptions. <coughs> um, the benefits that they have found for, for nurses verifying death are that they, uh, it reduces stress experienced by families. It offsets delays within and outside normal working hours. Um, and it improves continuity of care. It's, I suppose, particularly relevant for the night nurses where they um, have to call the doctor on call at night uh, to come out and verify the death. And that can 
be distressing for families having to wait for that to happen. Um, in Milton Keynes, it is only carried out by a senior member of the nursing staff, um, so that is one of their, their protocols there. So my recommendations then following my visit uh, was to look at developing learning pathways for the Irish Cancer Society Night Nurses, incorporating the ELCA programme. Advocate for DNA CPR documentation in the patient's own home. Um, and maybe liaising with the All Ireland Institute to advocate for that um, and the HSE. Liaising with On Board Oshnish to look at maybe uh, providing guidelines for nurses to, um, to verify an expected death. Um, I will write a written report on my, um, my visit and presenting today to the All Ireland Institute. I will also present um, at the Journal Club in the Irish Cancer Society and also at the annual Night Nurses Conference in 20, May 2014. And finally, I would just like to thank the um, All Ireland Institute for sponsoring and funding my, um, my visit to Oxford. It, is, it was an incredible week, I have to say, really valuable. I learned an awful lot. I've only highlighted three of them here, but I, I really did learn an awful lot. It was so worthwhile, so thank you so much for that. Particularly thank you to Michael, the Head of Education, and to Karen uh, Charnley. Karen was absolutely superb in helping me out. Uh, Karen is the Programme Manager for Education. And also I'd like to thank the team in Sobel, Dr. B.V., um, Christina Hedges, who was really superb as well in, in helping me to um, fit in in, in Sobel for the week. Thank you very much.